Holy cow. So freaking pod. Chapter, Chapter seven. seven. Wait, do we have to introduce ourselves? Do we at this point? Yes, uh, I'm sure we do. I'm Charles. I'm Chad. What happened in chapter 7? I'll tell you. The chapter opens with a description of Christian's playroom. No Xbox, no PlayStation, but a swanky dungeon filled with B BDSM swag. Anastasia grills Christian about his dom proclivities. They take it to the kitchen where they must eat a tiny snack and guzzle down some wine as they review the exact terms of the contract Christian has written up for their dom sub-relationship. They quabble over a small detail or two before it is revealed that Anastasia is a virgin. Why the fuck didn't you tell him, Anna? The chapter ends very strangely. Yeah, it does. I agree. Yeah. Um, here's, here's, let's, uh... Um, yeah, please read it out, somebody. Well, I haven't had sex before, so I don't know. My voice is small. I peek up at him, and he's gaping at me, frozen and, I, and pale. Really pale. Never, he whispers, and I shake my head. You're a virgin, he breathes. I nod, flushing again. He closes his eyes and looks to be counting to ten. When he opens them again, he's angry, glaring at me. Why the fuck didn't you tell me, he growls. <laughs> and that's the end of the chapter. Yeah, that's, that's this the, chapter is hilarious. This chapter is hilarious, so... It's pretty short, too. Yeah, yeah it's ten pages. Wow, ten pages. So, uh, pet theories? Yes, mm -hmm. um, I will start. So, um his playroom in his playroom there is a bed and a couch and they are both made of or covered by ox blood leather so with this reference to the leather it is i, I feel like this is adding some little part of my theory like the pieces are coming together <laughs> that meat something about meat is important in this book and i'm gonna find out what it is <laughs> <laughs> you think that like this book is like giving you some sort of subliminal transmissions that's giving you these meat dreams yeah it's got a something i mean they haven't even <laughs> eaten meat as far as i can think of it they've had like pancakes and eggs i guess and like it might have been bacon yeah, i don't remember them saying anything about bacon, so i'm gonna assume it's just pancakes and like an omelet um and then they had like coffee together there's a muffin and like now they have like cheese and stuff so there's no meat there's no meat where am i getting this that's true <laughs> you're gonna go on some sort of like weird weird journey to discover the truth of the meat in this book you'll like go to a butcher shop somewhere in england trying to find el james and then where are you just suddenly you'll run into like a talking cat and you'll get like you'll get the urge to go down into a well or something i'll like stagger up on a really really high mountain and ask like a dude with a big beard like what is it why is there why do i think of meat and he'll just be like the answer's inside you or something and i'll just be like i don't know why would you think i don't of know meat? why Jeez, are you here you people usually ask me about life or something meat like don't you have a better question <laughs> get a job so okay mine is that christian has a massive oedipus complex or some weird return to the womb thing uh hence the womb room let me describe this room the walls are and ceiling are a deep dark burgundy giving a womb-like effect to the spacious room and the floor is old old varnished wood it's a very strange comparison to make and then for that to be a place where all this weird sex stuff is happening like here we are in this womb so what does this mean who is who is whose baby who is the baby in the womb are they both the baby in in a womb i'm not uh, fucking sure each other like and hitting each other <laughs> two twins just doing some weird shit uh <laughs> <laughs> maybe christian yeah that's basically what i was gonna say like maybe christian was secretly a twin and then also he was oh. one of those one of those babies who who's the other baby. Oh, he, he ate the other baby. He ate well. He ate the other baby, but also then after that, as some sort of strange bodily retribution, he was one of those babies that had the like umbilical cord wrapped around his neck when he was trying to come oh, out. Oh, yeah. made him kinky. He was being suffocated, <laughs> and now he's trying to he's trying to get back at the womb. Two things. I find it weird that it's spacious like a womb. For most, for most <laughs> yeah, that doesn't women, make sense to me. women, that's like really conditional. It stretches out, but I mean, typically it's pretty pretty cramped up place. Maybe it's just trying to make them feel oh so small, like the very oh, smallest so small. baby zygote <laughs> they could be in a big spacious womb relative <laughs> the moment of conception. So is this some sort of argument for E.L. James's beliefs on when life starts? Oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> 
So the other reason why she may have used the word womb is because it's like a, a place where like primordial things happen. It's it's sort of mm. characterizing the, the intention with which Christian is doing these things. It's very like lizard brain, like echoes and water and hitting people and having <laughs> sex. I don't know, just very primal. So it's, I sort of got it. That makes sense. And actually, yeah, you, you bring it up as like kind of weird, but I was wondering if anybody thought it was like cool that she just described it that way. I thought it was like kind of out of the ordinary. Nope. I thought it was heavy handed and dopey. Okay. I think it's definitely not like one might assume that, you know, the walls were black or, yeah. you know, stone, like a dungeon, a medieval dungeon. I think it's cool that she didn't do that. Yeah, I think so too. I really think it's sort of, and this is something we can talk about later, it's sort of tying into <clears throat> the running theme that's been happening so far, where she's using... Red is also like a color, at least in the West, typically associated with like danger, and tying it to like oh. womb imagery makes it more like, more questionable. A safe danger. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it makes it like super questionable for if like you're reading it that way. So I really think it's a continuing theme in this like dark, exotic, dangerous portrayal. Uh, pet theories from you, Chad? Yeah, so I also have something that ties into the womb thing. So last time, or maybe two podcasts ago, when you mentioned like having a, a time travel for the NDA. Oh, yeah. So my theory is that it is still a portal, and they actually oh, enter a womb. Oh, Christian's whoa. womb. Uh, uh, you mean the womb where he was... No, Christian's womb. Incubated or the womb inside of him? The womb inside of Christian. The womb that no one will ever get to since he's a man. <laughs> Impreg. I, I cannot believe I'm bringing this up, but I think that men do have a vestigial womb inside of them. It's like this weird little deflated balloon near the prostate. Fun fact! <laughs> mm. um, yeah, Chad, because you would know, because you've watched a lot of movies. Some One time, somebody told me the plot to a movie, and it was really demented. It was like, hey, it culminated in the guy like made himself die in the womb so that he would never have been Butterfly born. Butterfly effect. Is it's that it? Starring Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> He like went back in time and choked himself with the umbilical cord. And died. Oh, then it so was butterfly yeah. effect. Yeah, it was butterfly effect. Yeah, thanks for clearing that up. I wanted to know. <laughs> that's like, but that's definitely like the quote unquote canon ending that, like, the one that was in theaters and everything is like he survives. Right. So it's... I guess what I was getting at is, is this butterfly effect? Is the setting up for the butterfly effect? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Kill me, Ella. So then there are also a couple of like extensions to this, which are well, perhaps it's not actually. A, Christian's womb. Logical continuations. Sort of. Well, if it's not actually a womb, maybe they're maybe they're like fighting Gigas, the final boss of Earthbound. Oh shit! <laughs> but then they have to go into robot yeah, bodies. Yeah, to go into robot body. Maybe they're uh, maybe they're at a womb dance club, which is a real chain of dance clubs in Japan. They're just called Womb. What? Yes. You see them Ew. all over the place. It's funny. Are First time. To... Are they fun? Is that what their purpose is to like replicate a womb? Or just, it's a, a weird Japanese just name a weird for a club. Name. Just a weird yeah. Japanese name for a club. Um, they just have like regular, depending on the night, like like electronic music or like hip hop or like whatever. They're just dance clubs. Is it the English word for womb or is Rhythmic it? Rhythmic whooshing. <laughs> it's just, no, yeah, it's just womb in big capital letters. I have a picture somewhere. I'll post it. Yay. Oh, and so this is the last thing. So there's this other thing tied into Japan. There's a place um, in Kyoto called uh, Kiyomizudera. It's a very famous like Buddhist. Yeah, it's like a Buddhist temple. Uh, and it's like on the side of this... Um, mountain so if you ever get the chance to go there it's really good you should visit before you get to the main part of the temple there is this thing that you can see called uh tainai meguri and that means womb tour and so it's like a thing wait is it is it big womb tour <laughs> no no kind of no. sounded like it's a different it. okay. tie. it's a different tie you can pay you pay like 100 yen like a dollar to go in and it's just this they warn you that it's like a completely pitch black like narrow hallway that you have to feel your way through and it's supposed to emulate like being in the womb of like a bodhisattva and then you get so you go in it's completely pitch black and there are other people in front of you but they space it out so that you don't usually run into anybody and you're just in complete and total darkness it's completely pitch black you can't see your hand in front of you or anything until you get to like a small open area where there's just like a tiny orb and it's lit from above with a single spotlight and you can spin it and you're supposed to spin it and make a wish and then you have to continue your way back out through pitch black. Yeah, so I did that and it was pretty neat. So th they could they could be there, <laughs> except that it doesn't really make sense. Okay, and I have one last pet theory and it's sort of long. What actually is happening, and this is related to things that happen actually later, it's not related to the womb stuff. Anna is actually just hallucinating or in denial for a variety of reasons. When Christian said, it's a flogger, he really said, it's Frogger. And Anna was staring at a Frogger arcade machine. And Christian's playroom <laughs> is actually 
It's actually a hideous man cave. It's full of childish adolescent crap. All of like Michael Jackson. He's just got like Sonic and he's got ghosts and goblins. So she's replacing it with like a more a more desirable like fantasy a la perhaps maybe in some interpretation Small Holland Drive. Exactly. She can't face facts about his video game. Right. She's just totally in denial. And when he flippantly remarked like not Xbox, what he really meant was that it's like his tastes are more refined and esoteric. Right. Like he would yeah, never. More, more retro. Only the classics. The bed is really like a giant carousel. Just like a big carousel they can ride. And like all of the, uh, all of the restraint machines. And um, furniture, they're just like small coin-operated kitty rides, like the little spaceships and horses Aww. you can ride on at the supermarket. I wish this was real. <laughs> and then Anna is just in denial. And all the foods and stuff that she's going to have to eat per the contract are just like Mountain Dew, Cheetos. Lunchables. Yes, Lunchables. Puffy Cheetos, Puffy Doritos, Cheetos. Slim Jims, Sierra Mist, Butter Crunch Cookies, Sour Patch Kids. Oh God, Puffy Cheetos. I haven't had those in so long. Sorry, that was a bad reference. No, bad. <laughs> Things that are bad. There are a lot of comic crimes, but I'm not even going to bother to point them out because by the time this book is over, E.L. James will have so many separate charges of comic <laughs> crimes that she's either going to go to comic jail for like 400 years or she's just going to get the comic death sentence. <laughs> so don't care. There's the one single thing that I wanted to touch on a bad mechanic because it was out of the ordinary. She was talking about how in the contract Christian wants to buy her clothes, but he says that she only has to wear them when she's around him. So she's like, okay, like I'll think of them as a uniform. Think of them as a uniform. And then it breaks. And then she says, I don't want to exercise four times a week. So what I'm trying to say here is that the speaker didn't switch, but she's treating it as if it did. So it sounds like Christian is saying, I don't want to exercise four times a week. Yeah. Um, and it messes up the whole flow. So you'll do it for me. <laughs> so you'll do it for me. <laughs> That's good. I, I don't have any mechanic stuff uh, for this one. You know, I'm at this point, I'm just glossing over it. But I, there is a lot of whispering in this chapter. There's a yeah. lot of whispering in general, but I'm so fucking sick of it. Yeah, whispers and gasps. Can't fucking hear each other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It seems like the like whispering and uh, gasping has replaced the all of Anna's blushing and flushing. I had, didn't have anything really either, and part of it is because I think her mechanical skills on the writing side have tightened up very slightly over time. And also, I think uh, like Cherry Doom, I'm just kind of glossing over stuff because so much of it is repetitive. There mm -hmm. is a little bit less of you know at the end of a, a quotation of someone saying something, there'll be like a comma, he said. Yeah. From what I've heard, that is like going out of style in publishing these days. Mm -hmm. um, when you're trying to, instead of like saying he gasped, like his voice was. Right. People don't like using the word said anymore, which, by the way, I strongly, vehemently disagree. It's not even the said, it's like just not attributing it. It's tying it together with actions or images rather than. Um... Yeah, right. Like it has to be like. He said, For instance, it's called a flogger. Christian's voice is quiet and soft. There's a lot more of that in this chapter. Or maybe I'm just noticing it more. No, it's no, I think she, you're right. in the earlier chapters, she um, like explicitly, and this is a kind of a faux pas. It, it always sort of was, at least in contemporary writing, where she would have, he shouted or yelled or he yeah, said. Yeah, a different one for every like. Yeah, for every line, she put in a different, different sort of verb. I heavily hate that i heavily hate that yeah there's there's two schools of thought on on what to do um for a dialogue and one is like you said just uh either putting like an action or something after it like you describe how he how a speaker is or something or right uh in some cases and she does this too in the book you just write it more like play or screenplay dialogue where you attribute the first two lines and then you just Right, back and forth, back and forth. She does that a lot in this one. In yeah, this it's to make two. conversation feel like it's flowing more normally instead of having mm -hmm. to break it up yeah. with stuff. And then the other thing is just that you, and this is for more minimalist writing, you just say like he said or she said, and you only use like said because mm -hmm. it should be obvious from the dialogue how the characters are emoting and that's all that's necessary. And then you can describe actions in the next sentence. I think a little bit from column screenplay and a little bit from column what you just said is what I prefer. So like said is good. Um, I think that trying too hard to get e emotional emoting <laughs> verbs in there is like too much. And it, it kind of shows that because you as an author are focusing too much on like the verbiage. You're not putting yeah. effort into the Yeah, rest it's of like the show, story. don't tell. Yeah, exactly. And it's also sort of a case of like, oh, I reached for my thesaurus here. Like, yeah, you're yeah exactly. Of, Which I hate. Especially in books 
like this, where it's all character interaction and people are going to be talking all the time. As somebody who edits things for other people, like I, I, I just swear to God, it's it's um it's another crime. It's another Charles crime that I haven't got a c word for, but I hate it. I mean, I remember in I want to say like third or fourth grade they would like hand a hand you a big list of things to say instead of said and they would say okay write a story but don't use the word said use one of these hundred words instead see what they should do instead is when these kids have to write like little diaries journals or whatever (laughs) with the first person i they should try really hard not to write i and then their issues will be interestingly rendered yeah. I, don't, I don't know what I was getting at there, but it's just, it's... I have one last thing to say about, like, the writing in this chapter, mostly about Anna's characterization. Anna has been a lot cooler in chapters. Like, she's a little more level-headed compared to how she was in the earlier chapters where she was freaking out every few mm-hmm. seconds. Because in this chapter, she's presented with a lot of pretty, in her mind, like, highly questionable things. And she's she reacts to them in a way that's like, oh, I don't know how to deal with this. But it's not like she's, like, passing out the way she was in earlier chapters. <laughs> well, part of that... Could be do the womb imagery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she feels safe. Yeah. In the womb. Okay. America things. On, on page 73 of my PDF document. I want him to be damned delighted. Yeah, we've already talked yeah, about this problem that in too. previous podcasts. <laughs> it's, it's annoying. The other thing is that really jumped out at me. Quote, well, I've not had sex before, so I don't know. Oh, yeah. This isn't exactly unacceptable American dialect. Like, I, like, th- like, okay, when I picked out this quote, I thought to myself, like, would Chad say, would he use this <laughs> form? No, he, okay. I, I just see, I see what you're trying to do there, but you're not catching me. Would he use this format to say something like, I've, I've not eaten a pear before? Like, and you might, Chad, to be fair, you might. So it's not. <laughs> It's not completely unacceptable, but it is very <laughs> English to say such a thing. I would not say something like that. You wouldn't? No. Okay, good. Well, then it is. Then I'm. Then my argument is better than I thought it was. <laughs> also, I don't know what you're freaking about, out about there. Well, okay, the line is, well, I've not had sex before, so I don't know. And the way that I said it at first, it sounded like I was saying Chad would say this specific thing. <laughs> oh, which is, I see. Which is really rude. Well, I mean, if this is, if, if that isn't actually like that British and it's just a, a person, like one of those qualities of never interacting with someone before, which apparently I have when I say like specifically and things like that, maybe, maybe I would. She says, my subconscious has emigrated or been struck dumb or simply keeled over and expired. Firstly, I don't know. I think I feel like emigrated is not something that Americans use much. I mean, it's usually immigrated or immigrants. Immigrated. They have different meanings. I know. I mean, one means like moving away. One means moving in. Her subconscious got on a boat and went to another country. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I mean, she is like a, supposed to be an English major, so I kind of assumed. I mean, yeah, it's still, that makes sense. I it's suppose. still weird. So just I just like using more words than I don't most like people. It. Yeah, it's, well, I thought I thought that she was just saying source. that like in a very uh, sort of abstruse way that her in, that her like subconscious had just moved somewhere else inside of her, which is why she used emigrate. <laughs> Oh, it's like, like it's the hiding. womb. That might be hysteria. <laughs> like the you know oh, how, yeah. was it so- was it Plato or Socrates who thought the womb moved around the body yeah. and that's what made people yeah, crazy. Basically, everybody right. used to think that for a while. That was like the, the it, medical uh, definition. Yeah. Just moving around, driving the lady crazy. <laughs> um, and also like the word using the term expired. Um, I mean that might be another you know just a English major thing, but I see it as either. British English or Southern American English. Hmm. She's expired in the heat. Oh, it's so hot out today. I just might expire. I may expire. <laughs> that was not. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I may expire. Maybe like uh, a, a plantation owner, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Or like <laughs> boss hog. Precisely what I was going okay. for. Yeah. When Christian referred to her as being stupefied with drink. Yep. That like doesn't even seem British, but maybe just like old-fashioned like another like where she's you know using uh old british literature terms yeah that might be true it just reminds me so much of harry potter stupefy, stupefy. <laughs> yeah they, they cast stupefy on her except since there's no magic in this world they just made her drink a lot <laughs> wording and it looks like we only have one thing except i can't see chat since so when, she, when she's arguing about she's arguing about exercising she's he says i don't want to exercise four times a week Anastasia, I need you supple, strong, and with stamina. Trust me, you need to exercise. <laughs> I just was like, but like, oh. I, I wonder if she knows what supple means, because I used to not know what it meant. 
I think, and then I, I would use I feel, it this way. I, I feel like it means... <sighs> yeah, let's say we skin cal- over curves. <laughs> I used to think that supplement like firm, but actually it means soft. Yeah, soft and like, pliable. Okay. Yeah, soft and pliable. But I used to think of like, because somebody told me like supple like a like a new tree, and like they're not really soft. Like they're just kind of like springy. Pliant more? I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah. I guess compliant. Uh, maybe like easy to bend without breaking. Yeah, it's sort of like malleable, but yeah, um, more for like organic substances you usually use it in reference like you'd say like supple leather or like supple um <laughs> something like that yeah it's it's sort of a weird thing to put with strong and with stamina supple like she's already supple I, if she's a girl she's already supple um <laughs> i don't know maybe guys are too I don't, it depends on your definition and uh, also if you date downy softy baby boys with funny skin <laughs> but anyway it was gross i didn't like it Men composed entirely out of downy. Downy. So yeah, detergent. Ooh. Okay. I like that. That would move beyond supple. My problem with this wording is that he is differentiating her from her body too much, and it sounds weird. Game over. That's it. That's all I have to say. There's a. This is sort of in line with other things that I've said. I forget where it is, but <clears throat> very near the beginning, where she's looking at some of the implements in the room. She says, "I vaguely wonder what they're for," and that just seems strange because she's pretty much vague wondering. Yeah, she. If they're if she's wondering what they're for, I mean, is, is she trying to say that she's trying to imagine what they're for, like the different uses? Because if she's just thinking like, "What are they for?" That's not vague. Like that's an explicit thought. Well, she was wondering in a in a vague, unassuming fashion. I wonder what they're for. Or was she wondering, or was she was she something else? It's, I don't know. I don't it's, know vague. it's vague. Then the next thing was something that Terry Dumardi said, which was subconscious, like emigrating, uh, expiring. I was mostly just confused about the emigration. Like, where did it emigrate? <laughs> where did it go? I'm feeling the same way. What if it went to Christian? Like, the inner oh, goddess no. came into Anna from Christian when she... The inner goddess came in from the kiss. <laughs> the theory of goddess transference. I will uh, write an <laughs> academic article about it. Yeah, so I thought, like, the other options seemed more likely. Because where would a subconscious go to seek a better life within Anna? Like, where... <laughs> Um, where would a subconscious, where would a subconscious vacation? Does the subconscious just want to get away from- In the elbow. Oh, nice. It it just, it just goes in the elbow and it, uh- And I wondered, like, is the subconscious just nervous? Is it just hiding from the inner goddess? Because there's all this sexy stuff around. Is the inner goddess suddenly going to grow 50 feet tall? Our our speculation about the goddess will be confirmed later with the goddess watch. So when they're describing the room with all the leather craps in it, I just want us all to note. First, I was really angry because, all right, so the word is ox blood leather. That's how it's described. And I thought like, why don't they just say red leather? But I looked it up and it is. It's a specific kind. It's kind of a brownie red leather. Oh, yeah. I guess, yeah. indeed, she could not say Oxblood red. Oxblood is like very deep red, almost brown. It's not very saturated color. Right, exactly. I was getting mad for no reason. <laughs> Maybe she didn't want to have Anna have to start that tongue twister red leather red Red leather leather leather, leather. leather. i wonder how they coined the term ox blood was like they're just some color expert standing around like cutting out oxes and like "Eh, that is a different color (laughs) i wonder if they took like a white ox and they just like threw the leather in a bunch of blood (laughs) <laughs> I mean, that's what I was imagining. But... Yeah, that, that's actually a good point. Maybe they just like an early form Maybe it's of... literally blood. Yeah, they just, to color it, they used blood and it dried. And it was just ox blood because that's what they used to make the leather. So they were like, oh, that's, that's the ox blood color. Yeah, maybe somebody will explain us that. So this passage, I want us all to comment. Here it is. How many women are... Who knew women? I, bur- I blurt out the question, <laughs> but I'm so curious. Fifteen. Oh, not as many as I thought. Fifteen people? What? Fifteen people? Isn't that a lot of people? To- Not by today's standards, by some people. Are my standards stupid? I think it's very different for different people. I would think that, you know, if there's a Sex in the City episode, fifteen is pretty low. Yeah, of course. Well, Sex in the City, sure. I mean, this brings into consideration, like, what's a normal person? I'm not going to try and fuck shame anybody here. <laughs> Have sex with as many people as you want, but okay, so how- well, Christian's 27, so I guess it's a little bit more. But just thinking of myself, I'm 23. Probably the opportunities I've allowed myself to in that situation, it's not even close to 50. Not even close. But I mean, he's a dude. Yeah, he's a crazy dom dude, I guess. He's super rich and handsome. He gets what he wants. I mean, it seems- it does seem pretty low for that. He seems like he's really hard to get along with, but I guess money, uh, yeah, money not matter as much. Money fucks. (sighs) Money fucks. Next. For the first time in what seems to be ages, I blush. 
Think again. I didn't even bother looking up the last time she blushed because she's always doing it. Just because you didn't blush in this chapter doesn't mean you don't blush, bitch. Yeah, you know, yeah it's what's been like an hour or something since you blushed. Probably lasts like 20 minutes in book time. So the next thing, Christian explains to her when she's like, what do you want to do? He's like, I'm going to fuck you, beat you, dom you, glom you. In return, you get me like what is that like that's not a good incentive <laughs> if she was like a like an actual sub then there is an incentive which is that she gets you know yeah yeah and i like i had that too like he couldn't think of anything better like i'll make you feel really good or yeah. you get to hang out in my fucking awesome house or like my loyalty my love he's really not offering her anything good yeah like, I, you can uh, yeah see. you can look at me you get to be with me that's what you get that he's the, he's one of those guys one of those guys <laughs> take it or leave it baby this is an extremely imbalanced arrangement and maybe that's the point <laughs> still i would think he would want to give her more incentive as someone who has no experience with this there's no sexual give and take it's just like um a sexual take really <laughs> so he has like the okay let's let me read the the bed description there's no bedding just a mattress covered in red leather and red satin cushions piled on one end this seems really gross <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I have to point out, leather and sad, that is not a cute combination. I also have to point out, pillows are bedding. That's yeah, true. They are. Fucking on leather, it seems, like, weird. I mean, leather is a big part of the BDSM kink thing, but, I don't know, it's just strange to me. Like, a whole huge leather bed, is it all one, is it all one strip of skin or is it like patched together yeah is it one big cow like how does that work one cow can't cover a whole bed unless it's like a very short twin she says that it's bigger than a king sized bed yeah, yeah. oh that's weird <clears throat> so where are the seams like if you, what if you're on one of the seams and it's like oh god and there's like sweat it's like it'll like stick to your skin how much you want to bet it's just like a really big pleather sheet <laughs> and she doesn't want to say pleather maybe it's say leather <laughs> that's more that's more likely maybe they killed a larger mammal maybe it's an elephant yeah maybe they skinned it like an elephant whale leather <laughs> and then they threw the elephant leather in a uh, smock's blood this also reminds me of another thing from an old online test it was a quiz and one of the questions was do you wear leather and it was a yes no question the next question is have you ever stopped to consider that your skin is a form of leather it's made out of the old skins of his uh, former subs oh god he really is he really is christian bale patrick bateman he had a feeding fetish until it all went wrong years ago and finally <laughs> So that he would not forget his mistakes, he made a leather bed out of his, his old sub. All right, I'm, I'm done. I'm so that, sorry. That ties into something that I had written down. He keeps commenting on how much he wants to, like, bite Anna's lip. Some sort of strange cannibalistic fetish. He's, like, watching her do it. He wants to do it. So it's, like, so, some sort of, like, self-harm or cannibalism fetish? Maybe he just wants to be her. Or maybe he's got in, like, an autophage fetish. And I know this is the wrong use of autophage. So he wants to be her so that he can eat his own lip. Yeah. All right, got it. For, for those wondering, an autophage is something that makes its own food, not something that eats itself. Uh-oh, I gotta, I gotta go check on something. <laughs> when she first sees the room, Anna is confused about whether Christian is a masochist or uh, a sadist. She's, she feels like it could go either way. And I thought that was pretty interesting that she didn't like immediately, with his personality, assume that he would be the dominant. And I think it would be really cool to read an alternate universe uh, of the book where he was actually the masochist submissive and, and has to learn how to properly dom. And it's really awkward because it's always really awkward when someone is trying to teach you to be dominant yeah. while being yeah. yourself. Just yeah. the situation I've, I've been in. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do you do this to people or do they do it to you? His mouth quirks up, either amused or relieved. People? He blinks a couple of times and considers his answer. I do this to women who want me to. Oh, I thought that was a weird thing. Like, how dare you, like, even consider that a man might do this to a man or that a man might do this to me. It was weird. If read in a certain way, it sounds like he's saying that women are not people. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, that's that's how I read it. You get it? That's exactly how I read it. It did not even occur to me. <laughs> That's also what I was going to say that I liked later, not the part with Christian, but the part where Anna assumes that it could be anybody. Yeah. Because she does that also with like the sadism masochism thing. Why does she seem so flattered by the fact that he wants her to please him? Does that make her special in any way? I, I don't know. It's like, um, let me see if I can read this. Why would I do that? To please me, he whispered as he cocks his head to one side and I see the ghost of, of a smile please him he wants me to please him i think my mouth drops open my theory about this is that anna is so useless in every other aspect of life the fact that somebody's asking her to do something <laughs> where she has a lot of responsibility is like really cool for oh, her that's very harsh it's it's really dickish of me to say but i yeah that's really yeah maybe my uh thing it's like the word 
please, the way it's, the way I kind of think of it is, I want you to make me feel good. That doesn't seem flattering to me. It just seems like, I want you to give me a blowjob. <laughs> Do stuff to me. I think there's two sides to this in terms of Anna's characterization. So one is like, this is her first like real crush. And I don't know, that seems like a common like early crush thing where it's like, you just want to make the other person happy or whatever. Like you just want excuses to be around them, that sort of thing. And also I think she's conflating like, that sort of feeling with like her lust they're sort of getting mixed together and she's sort of misunderstanding her own feelings a bit it's a little bit more realistic than what i said but i mean maybe i'm just giving her too much credit <laughs> maybe i'm just maybe you that. are a nice guy not a nice no. guy no, no never I'm, that i'm an evil man <laughs> there are a few times when christian complains about not being able to read anna like can't tell what she's thinking the old james is trying to emulate in twilight where edward couldn't read bella's mind for some reason i still don't i don't know if that was ever explained that's one of the reasons he was attracted to her was because that he he couldn't read her mind like he could read everybody else's mind. Anna is like totally open all the time. She's like her, she's like gasping and blushing and her mouth is <laughs> falling <laughs> open. She's like huh? tripping. I don't know. It's not consistent, I guess. <laughs> Maybe E.L. James has a different conception of what it means to like to emote to yourself, like to have thoughts. Maybe she actually is this crazy, like over expressive but for some reason, she hides it really well. I, I don't know. I, it doesn't make any sense. To me, my own emotions, my own reactions, when I feel them, they feel very powerful. And I, I'd be really surprised that other people can't read me, but they can't because I don't go like, <gasps> like yeah. when I'm feeling that way. Exactly. I think maybe E.L. James is conflating how she feels internally with like how someone should express themselves. The feelings versus... Presentation. The internal feelings versus external presentation. Yeah. So Christian thing about eating the food has come up again uh so he did this before when they had breakfast at the hotel after she got drunk like you must eat eat you gotta eat eat you need to eat or else i'm gonna fucking glare at you eat what do you make of this I would think maybe it had something to do with poverty as a child, not having enough to eat. So he wants, you, like, if someone read ahead? can eat. Have you read ahead? I, I don't feel like that's a good enough explanation for why somebody would be like, eat the fuck, eat it. Like, wouldn't it be for yourself? Maybe I'm just a selfish person. No, I, I think actually, if that's true, then it's sort of okay foreshadowing, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Because that is the sort of thing that a certain type of person would do. Someone who knows the value of food or something would encourage yeah, everyone exactly. to not waste it or something. Like, if you if you almost get run over by a car, like, a couple times, yeah. you'd be really super careful about crossing the street and be like, to other people, like, no, yeah. Like, yeah, look exactly. both ways. So he's like, he, he makes this big deal about how she's got to eat. She, I don't think she's eaten since breakfast. And, like, it's, like, 9 o'clock at night or something and she has some has some grapes and cheese for dinner and a baguette it's sort of and unclear. a baguette she probably had lunch because she was hanging out with kate they were spending the whole time uh making her pretty and then uh and she went to work i don't know it's concerning to me and so she, she's finally like dawning on her why the bdsm stuff makes sense she's like i realize he's been this bossy since i met him like anna he's so dumb of course <laughs> i think you realized it before that yeah <laughs> her obliviousness continues in funny ways in this chapter she feels like accepting money for clothes makes her a hoe i was wondering like why is that the thing you're asking like why is this the thing that makes her feel like a hoe or it's the pretty woman complex big mistake why does she feel this way generally was she supposed to feel like a hoe for some other reason all the stuff she's already received yeah yeah i guess like wouldn't she if she was going to be someone's girlfriend i feel like maybe it's maybe it's receiving the money not receiving the actual things no i think it's it's, it's contractual hmm. Hmm. It's, it's an exchangement of goods and services <laughs> i think it's you know receiving money instead of the actual things maybe maybe it's not really accepting money i think he literally is gonna like buy her clothes no, it's both. She's going to get a budget. I'm just going to spoil the shit out of everything. In contract. the contract, it says... She gets like oh. a stipend, a budget. Well, see, the thing here is that like Christian, this is the arrangement for his typical subs, which he's really not into necessarily. Right. And so Anna, he's this is like a girlfriend situation. I suppose. Anyways, I kind of went over this in the meta episode that we did last episode. So this whole thing, this contract, it's outlining like a material and emotional economic exchange. It's not just material. Like she's not really giving him a service like she would be if it wasn't like a girlfriend thing. But it is kind of a girlfriend thing. So she doesn't really understand it because first of all, like it's not... Like, usually when you're in relationships, you do get something like this, but it's not so overt. It's, like, so strangely overt that, like, you really have to point it out. 
And the second thing, the reason why she might also be not understanding it is because the reader might not be savvy to this or may feel like it's a little bit like, oh, wait a second. Like, isn't this kind of like, you know, doesn't she have like principles? And like, yeah, she does. I don't really feel like this is too whorish considering the stress that being a new person in BDSM who isn't necessarily like really all that into it. I also think that this is an issue of Anna sort of misunderstanding what sex work is. Quite possible because it's not the same at all. No. Yeah. And also perhaps maybe maybe the reason, maybe none of this, like Christian has never actually dommed anybody before, but he just recently saw the movie The Girlfriend Experience and is like, also I'm interested in BDSM. I guess my last thing is like, why is he so mad about virginity? It sort of is goes into it in the next chapter, but it's just like, I don't know, it's like so irrational. Shouldn't he be like mad at himself for picking somebody who is clearly inexperienced in like every single way? Yeah, or you know, maybe the problem he could, is with him. Maybe it's a good thing like he can totally work from the ground up teaching exactly everything well i think he's already kind of done that yeah related to anna's obliviousness throughout the book and the chapter so far she asks herself or she asks him if you have willing volunteers why am i here and like that's that seems like a stupid question uh, i don't understand like how anna continues to either be in denial or just oh, so oblivious to like the fact that christian obviously has some weird interest in her or just like wants her a lot well i do have a counter to this okay maybe she thinks that christian wants to have it on the side like does not want to do those things to her necessarily the fact that if they're going to have a relationship he needs to keep doing those things so he's saying like look this is me i need to hit people and you need to accept that. But not necessarily have her be the one hit. Because maybe he would realize that like she doesn't know about it. She doesn't like it. But that is one possible reason. I think it's still related to her. Why would anyone want me? Sort of characterization. Why would anyone want me? Mousy Anna. No one loves me. Where am I? And Which is still like a long line of, oh, these two other guys want me. But nobody wants me. Nobody wants me. Yeah, that sort of cognitive dissonance that she seems to have. It's obviously his response is going to be what he says, which is like, because I want you here. It seems like a, that's also why it seems like a strange question, because it's clear mm. like he's done. He's gone out of his way to bring her here. Right. It would be really funny if she was like, what is this for? And he was like, oh, nothing. And then like she goes home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Forget about it. Let's go. Let's just have, let's just have some grapes and cheese. Uh, I just thought you'd think it was interesting. I just, yeah. So another thing is uh, when Anna's asking about why or how long, how this came about, like how he became interested in it. And he like goes on a little thing about cheese, the little analogy. And Anna's like, we're talking about cheese. She's really, she's struck. He's changed the subject. And it's like, well, he's clearly just, he's being evasive and blasé and drawl. Like, come on, Anna, you've read enough literature. Can't you, can't you detect an <laughs> obvious evasion when, when you see one? Christian's just like, oh, cheese. Why does someone like cheese? Oh, you like cheese? Here, have some cheese. It's weird because he was being strangely like worldly before. Before he asked her this question as well yeah <laughs> why is anyone the way they are why do some people like cheese like do you like cheese <laughs> that was my favorite line have some cheese man i have another thing where anna twice in like this chapter she's like referring to alcohol to help her she had some great experiences with alcohol like a few chapters ago she's like i'll never drink again i think i think it's a i think it's a matter of wine being classy <laughs> maybe i don't yeah, know yeah maybe i don't know and not as bad it, maybe it's because you could you could maybe rationalize it as well she's not going to drink to excess like she did the one time yeah but she already is yeah and she like she, she explicitly says like alcohol will make me brave which means that she's using it to lower her inhibition i don't know what the right term for this is but like when i read those things i feel very oppositional because like she's like oh i made some bad decisions i better just make them again like yeah i totally understand i don't like the way they handle alcohol in this like oh but i mean i understand people do it like i, I don't want to make anybody mad like, i understand like a, a great deal of why you get dates in bars and stuff is because if you drink alcohol you, you get a little braver but when you're doing like bdsm you really kind of need those inhibitions i think many many parties are dry parties just so consent can be you know completely consensual clear. yeah that's something that has come up and will come up. Another thing is um, Christian calls her a good negotiator, except all the ways in which she's not, like not reading contracts or not having yeah. Yeah, know. logical points to make. Uh, and then the last thing is scorching gray eyes. Intense. <laughs> wow. It's just another in the long line of the description of his gray eyes as being a particular thing. My burning... My burning gaze. Scorching, burning, cloudy. Cold. Yeah, exactly. Rainy. Eye expressions. His foggy gray <laughs> eyes. His cumulonimbus eyes. That's kind of like most of the stuff, but I think that for you guys, listeners' sake, we need to go over the contract. Okay, so it starts, uh, read these rules and let's discuss. Rules! <laughs> Obedience. The submissive will obey any instructions given by the dominant immediately, without hesitation or reservation, and in an expeditious manner. The submissive will agree to any sexual activity deemed fit and pleasurable by the dominant, accepting those activities which are
are outlined in hard limits. Appendix 2. She will do so eagerly and without hesitation. Sleep. The submissive will ensure she achieves a minimum of seven hours sleep a night when she is not with a dominant. Food. The submissive will eat regularly to maintain her health and well-being from the prescribed food list of foods. Appendix 4. The submissive will not snack between meals, with the exception of fruit. Clothes. During the term, the submissive will wear clothing only approved by the dominant. The dominant will provide a clothing budget for the submissive, which the submissive shall utilize. The dominant shall accompany the submissive to purchase clothing on an ad hoc basis. If the dominant so requires, the submissive shall wear during the term any adornments the dominant shall require in the presence of the dominant and any other time the dominant deems fit. Exercise. The dominant shall provide the submissive with a personal trainer four times a week in hour-long sessions, at times to be mutually agreed between the personal trainer and the submissive. The personal trainer will report to the dominant on the submissive's progress. Personal hygiene slash beauty. The submissive will keep herself clean and shaved and or waxed at all times. The submissive will visit a beauty salon of the dominant's choosing at times to be decided by the dominant and undergo whatever treatments the dominant sees fit. Personal safety. The submissive will not drink to excess, smoke, take recreational drugs, or put herself in any unnecessary danger. Personal qualities. The submissive will not enter into a se any sexual relations with anyone other than the dominant. The submissive will conduct herself in a respectful and modest manner at all times. She must recognize that her behavior is a direct reflection on the dominant. She shall be held accountable for any misdeeds, wrongdoing, and misbehavior committed when not in the presence of the dominant. Failure to comply with any of the above will result in immediate punishment, the nature of which shall be determined by the dominant. Holy fuck! There's also a little appendix of hard limits. Hard limits. No acts involving fireplay. No acts involving urination or defecation on the products thereof. No acts involving needles, knives, piercing, or blood. No acts involving gynecological medical instruments. No acts involving children or animals. No acts that will leave any permanent marks on the skin. No acts involving breath control. No activity that involves the direct contact of electric current, whether alternating or direct, fire or flames to the body. So that is the contract, and that is the appendix we're given about hard limits. First of all, is it normal for BDSM people to drop like a real contract like this rather than just telling each other, you know, like not having a formal thing? For things like extended periods of time, like a relationship, then yes. There, And if you're doing like a 24-7 type of deal, living the lifestyle all the time, then yes, a contract is possibly necessary. I'm familiar with like the master-slave contract stuff. Right. It, ju it just seems like this contract is like for a lot more vanilla thing. Yeah, I was a little confused. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, if this is like what he gets off on, he wants this control, then yeah. It's much more like an esoteric form of control that he's after, like controlling what she eats and wears and her body, like rather than you have to crawl around on the floor or address me as master all the time. So the fact that the contract is not wholly sexual, like it has to do with aspects that are not quite as sexual, but like relate to mm -hmm. the body. Okay, I buy that for sure. And I think the fact that she is kind of a newbie, it is good to have it down on paper and just to say like, here's everything that will happen with us. So nobody's surprised. It's much more about dominance and submission rather than sadomasochism or master-slave. And the bondage and pain is more of a means to the end rather Rather than the point itself. For instance, I've done everything on his list of hard limits except for the urination and defecation stuff and the mm -hmm. stuff involving children and animals. When I was reading the list, I was like, oh, no fire play, no, no needles, no no electricity. That's, that's lame. I was surprised. It's not very fetish, is it? I mean, like, he doesn't really... Really, he's just into the control thing. It, to me, it seems like, you know, he's not interested in, like, a lot of variety in, in pain the pain is just for punishment. Right, it's a means to an end, like you said earlier. Chad, do you have any comments on this contract or anything that you would like to say about it? No, not really. H how do you feel about it? Do you feel like it's weird? What if what if your girlfriend was like, Chad, contract? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd be like, I don't think I have the potential to become a magical girl. Do not throw soul away. It seems like very straightforward. And since it's like, dom like dominant submissive, the things that would seem questionable are just re mostly related to that although they probably are also related to christian just being a creepy creep yeah i don't know i have to read i have to probably read more before i can really have real thoughts about the contract itself how that it's executed and stuff how it relates to the rest of the the book i guess plus i don't know anything oh it's okay <laughs> you know if you think about it do any of us really know anything by the way do you like cheese do you guys like cheese <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Something that was strange to me was no acts involving gynecological medical instruments. This uh, struck me as, as odd to specifically point that out. 
because, I mean, I'm assuming that he's talking about, like, speculums. Yeah, me too. Which are very uncomfortable and not sexy at all. Agreed. Unless you're into that. I feel like this is only in here because the author is a woman. I don't feel like a man would be like, oh, speculums. <laughs> like, no, no, that squeaks me out. Like, because, like, they haven't had to, you don't have to get your, your dick splayed open it's one of those things uh, <laughs> and i sort of wonder if i mean i mean it, there's not a whole lot of difference between a speculum and a really big dildo maybe uh, <laughs> i mean and that it is a thing that goes in there i mean you know it i guess would stay motionless rather than uh, yeah ex extend or whatever it doesn't seem like he's <laughs> he's jealous of other things going in the vagina I think it must be more to do with, like, um, just something about medical play he doesn't like. Maybe he doesn't yeah. like hospitals. That certainly makes Maybe. sense. If you think about it, it's a very effective power play thing. <laughs> Maybe Christian was just like, you know, I've taken this womb imagery too far. I'm just putting this in here. <laughs> oh, I'm grossing myself out. I gotta... It's <laughs> too much of this. All right, this is going in the contract. <laughs> I'm also thinking maybe these hard limits are sort of like for the reader to say, don't worry, guys. Don't worry. A contract with the reader. Don't worry. I'm not gonna... There's, no, there's not gonna be any blood. There's not gonna be any speculums. So you don't have to think about uncomfortable gynecological situations. There's not gonna be any permanent marks. So, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's like to, you know... The part of it, personal hygiene and beauty where the, they have like this misfashion to be waxed and shaved and just it's like oh yes everything including like the eyebrows and completely shaved head like he loves that <laughs> britney look ripley or like natalie portman more uh, more weird boom <laughs> baby stuff. Uh... no teeth no fingernails no, teeth, no nails no hair maybe more evidence for the whole christian as an alien thing i am human no, no human things none of those some of the rules like only going to certain approved salons seem strange to me that makes me think of like almost like a neurological like neurosis level of control issues oh like ocd yeah, or like i kind of think it's probably just that since he has such expensive taste he's gonna make her go to like the and also they'll know exactly what he wants but no yeah I, it's still like a heavy control thing Ow. i'm wondering about the personal quality section if if there is an nda how does anna's behavior reflect poorly on christian if nobody knows about their relationship then how is that going to reflect on him how far does the NP nda go like is Nobody allowed to know that they're dating, that they know each other, that they're having sex, that they're in just this specific relationship. We'll see, like, she didn't read the contract. Lines... She didn't read the contract. Well, but see, just in a few lines later, like, as I was wondering this too, I was like, that seems like strange that she'd need to be modest at all times because why would her behavior reflect on the dominant if it's a secret? But then he says, you may need to accompany me to functions. So obviously they're going to appear together sometimes. So Yeah, I suppose. So, but... like, if people know <laughs> they're associated, he just doesn't want anyone associated with him to, but I. I mean, still, like, that's why I thought the contract was both straightforward and still reflected Christian's creepy personality. Yeah, do what I want you to do. Don't do anything that would embarrass me. And so, and so, when they're kind of describing the playroom, there are a lot of toys, and so that means it's time for a special segment that didn't come up for many chapters. Yeah, it's time for a Tradium's shitty Where's toy bag. Oh, yeah. There is a large wooden cross, like an X, fastened to the wall facing the door. Uh, that's called a St. Andrew's cross. It basically... There are handcuffs and foot cuffs on the sides, and you basically mm -hmm. like spread eagle on the wall. Very common in any any sort of fetish club or fetish house, or you know, just some people's houses that are kinky. You'll have a uh, Saint Andrew's cross. They're m mainly for spanking. Uh, flogging, paddling. I learned that there was a specific like you're always if someone is locked into into the cross, you're supposed to either unlock their hands first or their feet first, and I, I can't remember which one it is. <laughs> any any idea on the, which one? Pro probably hands. I disagree. It's feet because if you unlock oh, really? the hands first, you'll fall feet. forward onto your yeah. face and die. Yeah, they could you could fall forward and not be able to like if someone. Oh, I see. Having, I like, was a, misunderstood. Standing. You're not supposed to be like suspended with your feet off ground. It's just supposed to be like you're still standing, but I suppose if if you've gone limp, then mm, yeah. but like if you've gone limp, then maybe hanging from your wrist right. might not be good. That would be really bad for your arms. I think if you're hanging, wait, 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 wait. The whole point of this cross is that you don't hang, right? No, it's just that you're spread out and you can't move. You're probably still standing. If say you lose consciousness and you slump forward, then you want your hands. No, I mean you want your hands fastened. So it must be hands. Feet first. first. That's my vote. No, feet first. <laughs> Fuck. 
I can't believe I've forgotten this. Just Google it. No, no, somebody should tell us. I refuse to Google anything. Okay. Somebody tell us. Oh, okay. They also talk about floggers. Floggers come in many, 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 many varieties. This kind sounds like kind of a cheap piece of shit. Really? Maybe, like, just thinking because the beads are plastic. Oh, yeah, that is... I mean, I guess that's safer than, like, glass beads, but... It just like struck me as like ugh. kind of a kind of a gimmicky flogger that you might find really cheap at a sex shop. Mm. There's one flogger that is really gimmicky. It's like a bunch of roses, like leather roses, and then they have little thorns, like barbed wire leather. I mean, it's a little it. silly, but I guess somebody could like yeah. it. Yeah, symbolic. It's, nice. They're, 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 they look neat. I, w- I wonder how many different types of floggers he has. Those are those are one of my favorite tools hmm. like and they also have like rabbit fur floggers that don't hurt at all like horse hair he, he has a fluffy one i okay. don't know what it's made of uh but yeah that's uh i think that's it for the toy bag got a cut no S- mm. favorite lines here is mine I'm not sure about accepting money for clothes. It feels wrong i shift uncomfortably the word ho rattling around my head that's really funny way to put it like just <laughs> oh that's what it makes me think of that's and that's why it's my favorite mine is uh why is anyone the way they are that's kind of hard to answer why do some people like cheese and other people hate it do you like cheese mrs jones my housekeeper has left this for supper she's like what <laughs> this is great what are you this doing is it's great. like great it's like one of those shitty segues she does, but someone's actually saying it out loud. And the thing is, like, the <laughs> segue is not, like, serving any purpose at all. None at all. I thought maybe it was supposed to be, like, him pressing the food issue again, like, trying to, like, segue into, like, how about you eat this goddamn food like I've been telling you, but to, like, try to insert it into the conversation in kind of a funny way. The way that she reacted didn't really seem to indicate that that's what was no. going on. I still think it's him being evasive just poorly for some reason because he's otherwise so kept together i don't know why he would just suddenly break down into like cheese 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 food maybe he just want to acknowledge <laughs> the way that he is think about that i mean that's basically what i think it is i mean in other well, in other respects where he's trying to hide that he generally is more collected yeah true uh mine is the last line why the fuck didn't you tell me <laughs> just because it's a stupid like what why would this have come up why the fuck did you tell me it would have come up earlier if they were gonna have a sex relationship sexy relationship she doesn't she doesn't share it he doesn't ask they're both in the wrong here i don't think people need to disclose necessarily i mean it wasn't she was assuming one thing he was assuming another thing and they were both assuming that they were gonna like fuck but it's not like they talked about it or anything yeah see i don't like that they need to talk exactly that's that's (laughs) why i think it's a weird thing to be so (laughs) angry it is very strange or something i don't i don't know i don't know <laughs> i don't know what his problem <laughs> is <laughs> yeah i don't think anybody calm knows calm down christian. christian calm down uh anna's like modesty about her virginity is sort of a pretty common thing in the world so the fact that she wouldn't just immediately like be like by the way i have never had you're a virgin either. i don't give a shit <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> like christian's so indignant like why wouldn't you disclose all this personal information about me we've talked like three times it's just him being an asshole basically yeah. It's time for goddess watch things. Oh, and I want to say thank you to uh, Devious Vacuum, who oh, yes. has been making little graphics yeah. for uh, for the goddess uh, light yes. levels. They're really cool. I Agreed. like them a lot. Thank and, you. Yeah, thank you, Devac. Yeah, thank you very much. And also, she brought up a cool thing about remember how in that one episode it was probably like episode four or five i was complaining about the color choices of the bra the blue bra i didn't like that she told me that in the twilight movie the reason that they changed uh bella's dress to a different shade of blue was for that very reason because it didn't go all through skin so i was right and that was cool so oh, so thanks for thanks for being just a good <laughs> twitter follower <laughs> okay so there's no mention of the goddess in this chapter but right. My subconscious has emigrated, or been struck dumb, or simply keeled over and expired. What, what does this mean? mean? Does the inner goddess have something to do with the mysterious disappearance of... Does the inner goddess kidnap the subconscious? The subconscious? <laughs> what has she done with her? The inner goddess is, has, uh, perhaps like Christian in, in the club chapter, has roofied the subconscious, taken her to her penthouse, to his, his hotel room. And is checking her bra size as we speak. Yeah. The subconscious is gone, but the inner goddess is nowhere to be seen. We don't know what she's capable Capable of the inner goddess could be capable of murder. We need to raise, raise the, the alert. raise the fucking alert. Raise it. It's it. Um, I'm gonna say it's a Christian Gray. Stormy Iron. <laughs> All right, the the alert has been raised from Heather Gray, elevated Heather Gray to Stormy, Stormy Iron, Iron Gray. Gray. <laughs> ah. <laughs>
that. Be, be on, be on. Be fucking watch. afraid. Watch out all the time. Uh, now that we're all terrified for our lives, what was good about this chapter? <laughs> um, I'll tell you. Well, I thought that the room was very well described. I mean, we had that thing about the womb, but that was, it was fun. You know, it, it proved to be fun that she made that weird description of it. I suspect that the reason that this chapter was a little bit more bearable was because neither Anna or Christian was speaking for longer mm -hmm. periods of time than usual. And I liked the fact that she had the room description of the contract as well, because it, it broke up the format a little of them just like talking at each other, like, oh, will they, won't they? It made things more interesting, and the fact that there was finally some concrete BDSM stuff paraphernalia, it was good. The book has finally gotten to the point where, like, maybe they'll fuck, and maybe they'll do BDSM things. It only took seven fucking chapters, or eight, so yeah. <laughs> I liked the I liked the room. I thought it sounded pretty cool. There are lots of options for attachment points, like on the ceiling and the wall and the bed. And like I said earlier, it's not like a totally dark dungeony horrible torture room, but it's definitely a room for tying people up in personality. Yeah. yeah. I would like all those things that he has. I liked that I mentioned it a bit earlier. Um I liked that Anna like ref asked Christian if he did these things to people and that christian caught the generality and then narrowed it down simply to women it, it uh, like one because anna it like seems more open-minded and two it really speaks to how unsavory and unlikable christian really is that he's just like nope just women no like, just girls people no women speaking of really gross unsavory things let's move on to the safe word and here is mine it is not the one about people and women but this one quote this is what I cannot reconcile. Kind Karen Christian, who rescues me from inebriation and holds me gently while I'm throwing up into the azaleas, and the monster who possesses whips and chains in a special room. Monster is completely uncalled for as a descriptor. I'm not okay with that. Christian is a monster for other reasons, which, like, ironically, it's the reasons <laughs> that she likes, like the fact that he showed up and was yeah. stalking her at the bar <laughs> yep. and watching her throw up on Jose almost. It is the first of many times that E.L. James will poop all over Christian just for having a fetish. Kink shaming! <laughs> not okay. I mean, the fact that he likes, that he has a fetish, it does not make him a monster, and I'm not okay with that. Mine is, she says, Kate had said he was dangerous. She was right. How did she know? He's dangerous to my health because I know I'm going to say yes, and part of me doesn't want to. That's really, this is really weird, and, um... I mean, I understand, you know, conflicting feelings about that sort of thing, but like just feeling like, oh, I can't, I don't have any control um, over whether I make this decision or not because I just, I, I have to be with him that I'll, I'll do this thing that I don't want to do. It just, just it creeps me out. Yeah, the fact that she can't source like the lack of control, like if it's, it could be like the lack of control, like oh, like I want the last piece of cake, like I can't, yeah. I gotta do it, or it could be like. um I can't control myself because his influence is so. Yeah. And that is, then that would be terrible. It's another problem of, you know, fantasy versus actual BDSM, I feel like. You only want to emulate that sort of lack of control. You don't actually want it. She shouldn't feel like, you know, she shouldn't be made to feel like this is the only way you will have me. You have to do yeah. these things if you want me. I mean, I, I, I sort of understand that, you know, there are limits and stuff but it's complicated <laughs> well first of all there's the line that anna has where she's like oh he likes to hurt women the thought depresses me and there's like a couple things related to that first of all it's like assuming that it's just like actually hurting people second if that's what she's thinking that only presses her not like disgusts or worries or horrifies her that like she thinks that he's like we're like actually hurting people and it sort of i think ties into the crush thing that i was talking about earlier where like is it only because she seems to like him way too much and is like willing to overlook something that she perceives to be rather a large problem in many regards it's sort of a multifaceted depressing thing in the book that line yeah and then the uh the sort of imbalance of the arrangement again one of the reasons that it seems imbalanced not just in terms of like what they're exchanging is that all of it is he's getting like all of the satisfaction and basically his assumption in saying that she gets him is that she's satisfied enough with just having him and that's why it seems so imbalanced to me it's not in there's not even anything approaching an equivalent change of like what would make them happy in this arrangement or satisfied with what's going on the contract in his arrangement would make a lot more sense if like she was a sub with the fetish for being like dominated but she hasn't even ever had sex and so his way of justifying is that well you get me that's enough of a persuasion apparently to most women or something which is like a really terrible way to be as a person <laughs> and anna's negative view of sex workers and exactly what their work entails i didn't like that either i think uh sex workers 
I don't know how everybody else feels about it, but like I, I think that they definitely like they deserve a lot of like they yeah I I have a lot of respect for them for sure. Like it's not we shouldn't be like oh it's a ho I can't accept these things. Like if you worked for it, you can have it's it. It's part of the history of like dehumanization to think of them that way. Like, oh, I don't want to be like that. Classicism and dehumanizing. No, my brain is like arguing with me because on one hand, if the if the perception, regardless of the truth of it, which is that they deserve respect, if the perception of it is that, oh, it's hoish, and she's afraid that like maybe that Christian will see her that way, less human, and then it is it does become a good concern to have. But that's not the way that it's really being presented. I like I totally understand what yep. you're saying. And see, part of the yeah. problem is that this is really like a common thing that most people would probably have. Like this thing, like, oh well, I don't want to be seen as like I'm not a prostitute, where that's definitely the sort of thing a lot of people might uh, a thought a lot of people might jump to in a situation sort of like this where it's an obvious exchange of goods or money for what's basically like a sexual relationship and so you can't really expect E.L. James necessarily to take such a middle of the road like equanimical stance but at the same time she could just not include it at all because it really doesn't add anything for Anna to go she she could have just said like oh I feel a little guilty accepting these yeah things. exactly because that's, that's really what she's than, saying yeah. and instead she it's like cast in this very like weird oh i'm getting clothes for sexual satisfaction of christian gray huh i'm a hooker now she's not even really selling out i i don't think she is anyway <laughs> she can't sell out because she's not getting anything yeah exactly she's not like compromising yeah. herself in any real way unless she thinks there's some ethical well, not yet anyways yeah well i mean unless she thinks that there's some ethical problem with doing prostitution for some reason like but it's not even really prostitution well right but i mean she's just thinking of it that way yeah. at that moment <laughs> that's what i'm saying like that would be the only thing that she could be selling out would be like her ethics or her morals or something but maybe she's just you know old-fashioned right that is sort of yeah but the thing about being old-fashioned is that like men used to buy shit for women all the time it was expected yeah so darn it <laughs> darn everything and that's that's all i have it's it's to spoil the dungeon times <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was that was a quiet whip this time. Very far away. It's a deep dungeon. Because the womb is so large. A deep, dark dungeon <laughs> fantasy. Did they use everything mentioned in the room? I already know that they don't. Oh. When I saw this question, I thought about going back and checking, but then I remembered that it is a plot point that they don't. Do they have some sort of S and M dinner at the table? Because I was. You mean like sushi body like there's a big table what's that for so there's i don't know like a sushi body thing um i suppose but like i don't know i was just thinking of like either just eating dinner in this this room would be very strange well i'm just thinking like you bringing it up makes me realize that that was some squandered opportunity because like the fact that he's so rich and he has this food thing like you think they do something with it <laughs> but they don't uh, so nope. Do we see the prescribed list of foods? Because this sounds really shitty to me. Like, I don't know, like, how stringent it is or, like, you know, if it's, like, only this brand of uh, cereal bars or... Do we ever see the, the list of foods? Uh, no, and... We don't. I have a I have a thing to say to ask about that uh, the food thing because I secretly because my roommate when we were when I first got the book he was like reading the last sentence of every chapter and at one point one of the chapters like he commented when we were talking about the podcast like oh, I can't wait till you get to the chapter that's basically all contract and I was like what um, and it's not this chapter it's another one and I was I was looking ahead I wasn't like spoiling anything but Anna does comment on like the food list so I was curious do we don't actually see it she just oh maybe there is. There is. I'm gonna check. Ha, ah, whoa, whoa, yeah, wow. There's a way longer contract that she only reads later, I think. Here's what she says. I can't even bring myself, I can't bring myself to even consider the food list. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. I remember now. Does she consider it later? Does she? I don't, I don't know. know. You're no. the spoiler dungeon. I, don't, I, don't. <laughs> I, am, I am the spoiler. I'm the entire dungeon. <laughs> Uh, dungeon oh, master. Hmm. No, Interesting. No. There's no dungeon master. There's only the dungeon. Uh, there's an email saying food. I'm not eating food from a prescribed list. The food list goes, or I do. Deal breaker. Uh, it's probably just not yeah, there. Yeah, it's probably, it's it's probably, probably just, just not, not there. Existent. That's a bad storytelling technique. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> yeah, me too. Right to the author. Yo, Dream, what the food list? <laughs> Maybe it'll be in the movie somehow. There'll just be a third act montage of Anna lusting after food. <laughs> Some sad piano music as she looks into the distance and like fade in... Uh, pictures of the food next to her head. An ironic Pretty Woman montage where that song will play, but it'll just be Anna trying, like, looking at cakes and stuff. Perfect. Okay, well, that's it. Um, so next time we're gonna talk about Chapter Eight, and I'm gonna spoil it all for you because we're in the spoiler dungeon. Still, I, I tricked you. We're here. Um, <laughs> you can't say for it out. They're gonna have sex finally. Oh boy. Is that? It, do they? Am I wrong? It's Chapter Eight, isn't it? Chapter Eight. The chapter 
of all chapters be there or don't. The only chapter anyone wanted to read. All right, so uh, laters, 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 baby. baby. <laughs> sort of right, right, right when I finished the chapter, I had this thought about how the chapter was. It was an envisioning of the chapter, and it was that it was unfolding actually between George and Kramer from Seinfeld, because like the whole conversation negotiation is like it just is like between these two characters. It's like where George is all like, I don't know, Kramer, and Kramer's just like, No, you got to do it. Eat your food, Anna. Toy bag. Um, I don't have Where's, a. I don't have a. Hoodie. Oh, you don't have this. Wait, I do. I do. I'm wearing one right now. I'm gonna do it. Didn't we send you zipper noises? There, I did it. You do it too no, fast. Didn't. Like it's like this bag like, has better? a tiny opening. No, it's it's a big bag. There's a lot of ground to cover. <laughs> All right, like that. What are you? It's just, it's like ripping it down. Just do it slowly. Didn't we send you zipper sound files? Yeah, that was so short. But this is like for like a, a podcast. Like if this were real life, obviously. But... <laughs> All right, enough, enough, enough. <laughs> oh, I'm dying. <laughs> okay, okay, well, we have a lot of zipper noises. All right. <laughs>